Welcome back, True to Horse. Today we're privileged. We've got one of the reps from uh, Perina Feed, which I'm a firm supporter of them. I like them. This is a rep from them, Rusty Bain. And uh, like I said, I got privileged him coming out. And part of the reason here is because I got three horses I'm really worried about their needs. Some people look at Bravey and say he's got good meat on him, but me, I like to see about probably 50 pounds on him and two older horses so hopefully Rusty give us some insight and y'all some insight to where we should go with this. So Rusty if you want to tell the audience your background feel free and go for it. Son. Certainly be happy to. Yeah i uh, been with Purina a little over 16 years now but prior to that I uh, was in the thoroughbred industry for about 18 years. Decided to get into that right out of college and had the privilege of managing a couple of very nice thoroughbred training and breeding operations and had an opportunity to train at the racetrack and have one really good mare. Uh, the, the friend of mine who was a chiropractor bought her for $500. She'd had a fractured pelvis as a yearling so we turned her out and got her back as a three-year-old and ended up she was Texas Mayor of the Year and ran oh, over $400,000. So Can't we beat were, that. Oh no, she was a great mayor and uh, uh, appreciate the opportunity to be with her. But in my childhood, my grandmother took me to the Missouri State Fair Horse Show as a child and I got bit by the bug at that point and spent the rest of my uh, uh, youth trying to learn about every breed and every type of discipline there was from Missouri Foxtrotters to, to riding English to showing saddle breads and road horses and ponies. So uh, I've had a very blessed life of being around horses. Yeah, I know. It is uh, bad as a drug sometimes <laughs> yes. when you get caught. And that's for a lot of people like me, my background, I started when I was seven. And all horse fascinated me, not just the cow horses or stock horses, the jumpers, because I love my, my two favorite events is working a cow or jumping a fence. Now I'm not talking about a hunter show either, I mean a fence, mm -hmm. and I love cross country, and I got a horse out there, oh smoke, we'll evaluate him later, I mean he's taking blue in cross country, and look at him, you wouldn't think of it. But on the other hand, since I was doing more for fun, well, when I came to a cross country jump, and if I thought, even though I know he can make it, if I thought it was too dangerous, an accident happened, I would pull him. But so, first I like to talk about and. Uh, okay, we're on. All right, Rusty. First horse I want to ask you about, and a lot of people would say, look at Brave Eagle, and say, well, he's not bad. Me, I prefer another 50 pounds, and like we'll talk about here. The stress of the trip, our foliage has changed, uh, grass hay here is not the graze. So for him to get up to par and get him back, muscle back up, what would you recommend? Well, the first thing I do in an evaluation is utilize the body conditioning scoring system. It was a process that was uh, developed down at Texas A&M a couple of decades ago. And what it does is evaluates where you are meeting the energy needs of your animal. It's a one to nine scoring system. One's a very thin emaciated horse. Right. Nine is an obese horse. Rule of thumb is that you take six areas where horses deposit fat. You're supposed to score each one of those one to nine average. I don't do that. I use them because I may go through 30, 40 horses in a day sometimes at the farm. And the rule of thumbs I use is if you visibly see the outline of the rib from the side, they are below a body score five. Exactly. If you don't see rib, they're above a five. And you can see, we just see a little bit of outline of rib on him. So that drops him below a five, but he still has good conditioning on his tail head. He's still a little, he's got a little bit of peak over his loins, but not a tremendous amount and uh, the crest of his neck. So I would score him a four and a half, which is not low, but to your point, 50 pounds would actually add about another body score point exactly. on him, and he'd be about a five and a half, and that would be the optimum body score. We try to get him between a five to a six. Yeah, because that's one, one people who over supplement and everything. If you get them too big, you gotta realize, just like people, they're not healthy, and they're, you know, horses get a form of diabetes now, yes. and they're coming up with some weird diseases that many years ago, you know, we didn't come up with. and. And then you're dealing with cushions also that come out of it. So now his feeding program, since we are dealing with grass hay, and you know the hay of this area, what would be the ultimate feed for him? Well, when we look at a product, we also got to look at are there feed form types that, that the owner might be pre prefer or might be better, whether that be a, 
a, a, a textured ration that has grains in it or is that a pelleted ration and we'll kind of get a feeling about the whole farm too because we have some products available out there that actually will minimize not having to have so many different feeds for particular horses that are a full program for a whole farm so you know looking at him I kind of get some background and then look at the rest of the farm oh, before I right. come forth and make any recommendations because there may be some benefits to you know to to what those are and usually I'll make notes on that horse and his evaluation but your point moving from California to Tennessee we know that the forage is not going to be as high so you probably have to supplement more feed just to balance off the reduction in calories you get from the forages here in Tennessee. Now one thing as soon as we get all the pastures set up we're fortunate you know we got enough acreage here you know we'll be able to put them on grass most of the time but still you know the especially like now everything's going to seed and the protein content and so the other thing that happens here in Tennessee this time of year which is middle of June is that most of our hillsides have fescue on it yeah fescue is a cool season grass so when we get to the heat that we're currently in it actually goes into dormancy so it's not as lush and it won't start coming back out till we start getting to cooler temperatures in October and then it'll get good and lush again until we start getting into the real cold weather. So that's an issue we deal a lot with in the summertime, a lot when it's still green, but uh, we're not getting the nutrition quality out of it. That's good to know. And earlier we talked about, and I told you I was going to ask this question again, uh, the fat content. And your senior feed, and I asked you a question about why not put high fat in your regular senior feed? Now, for the public out there, I think it was good information, so if you don't mind, explain that again. Yeah, the comment is, uh, why isn't Equine Senior higher in fat? One of the reasons is that Equine Senior is a complete diet. It actually can be used as a hay replacement on an old 30-plus-year-old horse that doesn't have any teeth left in his head. He obviously cannot chew grass, he cannot chew hay, so the senior can be the bulk of his diet, including replacing all the hay and forage. So if we're feeding 1.3% body weight, or 13 pounds to a 1,000 pound horse a day to replace all the hay in his diet and provide the nutrients he needs, if the fat's too high, they may say, hey, he's putting on too much weight, let's back down on that, and if they do, they won't provide enough forage to allow his uh, digestive right, system to work properly. Work. And uh, there's another thing, you know, now Rusty, tell you, I'm not in Prina's back pocket, far from it. So when I put, endorse their product, you bet you I use it and I believe in it, but the biggest thing, yes, Prina is a little bit expensive, that's why I hear the biggest gripe from people. But this is what I tell them, saying, people, you can buy a cheaper feed. And just by regs, they got to put a certain amount of protein and yada, yada, yada. The key word is digestible. And Purina product, what you're feeding in that stomach, 90% or better is going to be in that, getting their system. It's not going out back in. Some of these cheaper feeds, because they can do it, and it doesn't matter what they put in it, bring that protein or fat content up. It can go in the mouth and out the back end. So why spend $15 for a bag that a horse ain't going to get everything out of it when you can spend, well, like Ultium is my favorite one. You know, it depends on where you get it. It runs from 21 to about 26 to $27 a bag because of grain prices. But when I buy that, Number one, I don't have to feed as much because they're getting full benefit of it. So in the long run, I'm ahead. So when you're buying these feeds, you know, you got to think about that digestible pro, you know, content of yep. that feed. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do here, go over there and gather up the other horses. So for us to look at the two old guys, the two Mustangs, I'm not really worried about, but we'll touch on that too, if you don't mind. So we're going to take a short pause and move our camera. Oh, here comes one. All right, Rusty, this is my main boy. Ah. He's 25 or so. He's the one I was telling you about earlier. He can jump a fence or work a cow. He can do upward dressage movements. I mean, he can do the prettiest true flying lead change you've ever seen. When really? I ask for one, he's up in the air and doing it. And this is 
my old baby. She's about 36 years old. She's wow. an air paint mix. Oh, yeah. She can run a set of cans even this day if I set up a set of cans. She's losing a lot of muscle. But, you know, at her age, these two's had some good babies. Mm -hmm. So, let's start off with Smoke. We can start with him. Certainly. And uh, remind me, you said Smoke was how old? Uh, 25. 25. Age. One of the questions I get pretty frequently when for us is when do they need a senior diet? And there is no given date that all of a sudden that changes. We usually say it's around 18, but it gets down to the individual horse. And usually when I say is when do they need a senior diet is when they you see them in the winter time, usually they're on the lowest quality forage. Yes. They are all year long. And if they are having a hard time maintaining weight, that means they're not digesting the hay properly. So at that point, we may need to look at a senior diet on those. If, if you fed a senior diet to uh, uh, smoke it all? Yeah, he used to be, until we made this move, yeah. you know, you, just like gravy, about 50 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. And the biggest part was that, you know, we're, we've changed uh, hay now. Yeah. Of course, they're on, they're on pasture, but still. And he's probably about the same scale about gravy eagle, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'd score him a four and a half. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. just a ooch higher, but it's still a round off to about a four and a half, a little bit of rib visible, but uh, not a great concern. But to your point, I'd like to see a little weight on exactly. him, particularly pick up after he's gone through the stress of the travel. Yeah, and then we got the old lady over there. I was telling you, she's about 36 years old. And... Um, so her, yeah, she looks great from a body score, and I'd score her about a five and a half. Yeah, she's actually, when <laughs> she was here, other than her weak back from being old, Oh yeah, she, her body score would be higher yeah. because she's not as ribby. So, and like Cindy was telling about before we got on the air, you know, we were really worried about her because, yeah. you know, she's, at this point in our life, I've had her since she was a two-year-old. Wow. And we have lived from Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean now, and back to Tennessee, because years ago I was known as Tennessee Horse Whisper, and now I guess I decided to come back. Now, of course, these two, they're Mustangs, mm -hmm. which they are used to living off of not nothing, much. Yeah. not much. <laughs> and that's, you know, y'all see them. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, like Suka, he's probably about a dang six. Yeah. And yeah, both of those are around the six, yeah. uh, six and a half, almost maybe. Yeah, but they're in well, that. So they're motasm. That's the people that adopt mustangs. So I do a lot with mustangs, and I like them. They make a good little horse when you. But you got to have them. They're still a wild horse, yeah. and I don't care how old they get. You always got to remember they're a wild horse. Mm -hmm. Of course, Eeyore, he, he's about nine, but we don't count him. <laughs> Says, hey, don't forget me, though. <laughs> but, like, a lot of people, when they first get them, you know, they're really worried about, you know, we got to do this and that because they didn't have them in the wild. But we both know, at the end of the day, if you got good foliage, good hay, or in pasture, you know, you take these creatures, we give them supplements just to keep them, you know, coming up. Yep. Yeah, you know. and that's yeah with a horse that has great metabolism. To your point, the reason the Mustangs do so well is they're able to really digest yeah. that forage and pull a lot more out of it than our other yeah. horses who are genetically been horses. selected. Because they were selected, they didn't make it out in the yeah. wild. Their their uh, uh, grandparents and and their lineage ahead of them, then they didn't make it. So that's been a natural selection. So usually those Mustangs do pretty good, but to your point, they still need the, the vitamins and minerals they're not exactly. getting from forage, and they may at different times of year need some additional protein to, yeah. to help out with uh, just metabolism. And that's a lot of people, you know, they say, I don't know what happened, my horse all of a sudden lost weight. If like me, I'm really picky. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm looking at mine, and I'm already, Cindy to tell you, I was floating teeth yesterday, sweat coming out of me, because first thing I do, got get them, them teeth right because we both know no matter what you're feeding them if them teeth are sharp they're not going to be able to chew it digest it it's just going to go because my favorite goes, saying goes one in out the other so that's like brave eagle we floated his teeth yesterday thank god i can do it because like i said he's about 50 pounds under and i want to get him 
back up that and like I said we've been redoing it and now barns up and we'll be able to start because like our program here is since we got the grass every day morning they'll be on pasture every night we'll pull them up you know supplement them probably supplement them before they go out in the morning supplement them at night so it'll be twice a day you know then they'll get their foliage all day long and that, then they pick and choose when they eat because we both know horses digest them that's the best way to do it instead of just keep them up hay them in the morning and they need they're better off if they can of course you know like southern california you didn't have that option but the quality of hay is better and uh, like some horses out there i would feed three times a day because they just couldn't you know twice a day wasn't enough so all in all general you saw these two old boys and taking all the horses in hand rex i know he's good he's probably he's he's he needs more muscle he's the other paint there but he you don't see no ribs on him you know he's my ideal weight he's he's not so heavy they can't be athletic but you don't see any ribs on him so you know he just needs more muscle because you know through years he's my horse so guess what you know like the old cobbler you know he wears the the shoes with the holes in them because exactly. he doesn't have his own feet. Yeah, you know, because I don't have time to finish my horses off. Yeah. So, what would your suggestion be taking all of them and count? Looking at them, and like I said, I wanted to kind of learn about all the horses, see if there is a product that could have a kind of a meat all for all. And I really don't think because of the wide variety of lifestyle of animals and metabolisms you've got, mm -hmm. the one product's going to do that. So looking at your older horses, certainly I would lean towards the equine senior diet for those. The minimal feeding rate for that to get the vitamins and minerals to be fed with hay and grass because it looks like they're still able to digest their hay and grass to some degree. It's going to be around five and a half pounds per day is what the minimal would be. Looking at the two Mustangs that are high metabolism, we've got a product that is designed specifically for those easy keepers that will supply protein, vitamins, and minerals, but you feed at such a low feeding rate that you don't have to feed them a lot of calories to get them fatter, because that's not gonna do them any good. That product is called, it's just gonna change names into Enrich Plus. You can feed anywhere from a half a pound to two pounds a day, and it's protein, vitamins, and minerals, but not a lot of calories with them. So is that uh, your strategy, is that about the same what it what is or the strategy is actually uh, designed to be fed with hay the minimal feeding rate for a thousand pound horse is about three and a half pounds per day it's a great product like i was uh, talking about a product to meet all that's what it was designed for is yeah. that your commercial horse farm that has babies has mares has performance horses has stallions has young growing horses weanlings yearlings two-year-olds to feed one product at different amounts to meet their needs but uh, that would be a good product for a couple of horses, but it wouldn't meet all the yeah. needs of, of those today. Yeah, and these two, they wouldn't need it. No. Imagine strategy is probably higher content than, what was that one right before that you said? The Enrich, uh, Enrich. Enrich Plus, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, the protein content, what's the difference? The actual offense? difference in it, and some people sometimes freak out of the Enrich Plus, is 32% protein. Okay. But if you're only feeding a half a pound a day, you're feeding less total protein. Oh than what's in three and a half pounds of strategy. Yeah, so exactly. that's what it's designed for. It's concentrated, so you don't feed a whole lot of it, but they get okay. their uh, they get their needs at a low feeding rate. And Brave Eagle, you would suggest? Well, I, I keep going, uh, thinking that uh, as much as you loved Ultium, it would be a great product for him if you're gonna continue to work him yeah. later on. So uh, that would be a product. But back to what you said, strategy is a great product mm -hmm. also to get him to put weight on and I've had a lot of luck with horses underweight. Again, back to some you said the digestibility of it, that it's a great way to get them back a desired uh, body conditioning. And a lot of that product will just determine exactly what your plans are with him once you get to, once you get him further here, whether he's gonna start breeding, he's gonna start working, then we might look at a higher caloric level feed yeah. and strategy. So what's the protein difference between strategy and OTM? Strategy is a 14% protein. I thought it was. Yeah, and Ultium is it's an 11, uh, 7, 7 protein. Almost 12, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I know the fat's different because I think uh, strategy, of course, it's been years since I've seen a bag. So what, it's about 5? 
Oh, uh, it hadn't been uh, as, as far as fat level. Yeah. It's, it's a six percent fat. Six yeah. versus OTM, which runs around eight. I think it's a twelve actually. 12, mm -hmm. Actually, twelve. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's another product that runs about eight. I won't mention their name. <laughs> that goes years back too. And this, and since that, I've actually, like I said, switched over to open. Mm -hmm. And Eeyore, I know what he needs. Uh, just foliage. Yeah, yeah. These guys are, uh, they're like a horse times 10 with their ability to yeah. digest their crap. Actually, he, he's one I'm most happy with because he was too much overweight because he had that thick crust. Oh, yeah. And good. now he, he's got to roam a lot. And before, where we was at before, he had he can roam all over the place. But this is his buddy here, Suka. Oh, so they stay close, yeah. And that's something about these guys. You talk about where the where Mustangs came from. Look at the environment that the, the, the burrows burrows came yeah. from. They came There's from very similar thing. environments. Same, yes, same situation. Yeah. Well, Rusty, I really like all the info, and we'll talk more. So you know, when you're thinking about your feed. Like I said earlier, think about your digestible protein, fat, and everything that's in it. Don't just think about the price tag, because at the end of the day, you're probably going to be a farther ahead. And I think Rusty will back this up, even though, you know, and I think I've got a good read on Rusty. He's going to tell you the truth. I'm right on that, because you will be a farther ahead, because you won't have to put as much in the horse to get the same results and I've actually I'm not going to say how many years ago but actually I've been to a Prina research center and the farm and everything and I was 18 no I wasn't I was actually 16 and I, it impressed me then because I've always you know I've always been fascinated with all aspects you know so with that any preaching y'all gonna get two videos without me preaching <laughs> so you know I thanks Rusty for his time My pleasure. and you know see here's something a little bit different and I hope everybody out there got something out of it real quick we had a question and I know it's hard for you to answer without seeing the horse one of my Facebook people asked about they had honey six-year-old six horse that they're having trouble gaining weight. They've had vet out there, float his teeth and everything. 18 acres. 18 acres of, of grass. Of course, it's Alabama, which their foliage is worse than it is up here, you know, because brown mobile, I think. So, you know, you're getting farther south. And, you know, here, the farther south you go, coast, closer to coast you get, you know, the worse the foliage get. Mm -hmm. Even though it might be green, as people don't realize that just because it's green, it might not be worth a hoot. So in a situation like that, what would you suggest? But I know I'm putting you on the spot because yeah. you can't see the horse. Yeah, and it'd be nice to know what have they done previously, what are they fed and how much of it. But they hit the key thing, get the teeth done, work with your veterinarian, you know, look at a parasite program because yeah. today, you know, we have so many different parasite programs that if you're not working with your veterinarian closely on, a, on the proper program for your area, there may be issues with that too. You know, is there any other uh, underlying health issues, whether it's a metabolic issue or maybe even ulcers that the horse may yeah, that's have. that's true. So we always want to evaluate that first and work closely with your, your veterinarian to make sure that you've got all those health things addressed. And, then you got to look at just the getting the calories into the horse so that we can put them on a weight gaining program. Well, like her now, she's using a cup of oil. Yeah. Oh. You know. Mm -hmm. But still. And one of the things is just feeding oil by itself. It, it provides fat, but it doesn't provide, provide the protein, and vitamins, else. and minerals that helps that animal metabolize it. So looking at a complete feed and feeding at least three pounds per day usually will put. Uh, uh, or three pounds above what you're currently feeding per day of the Karina feeds like Strategy and Omeline and products like that should put you on a one pound per day gains on your horse. So mm -hmm. that's one of the things to look at, but certainly want to evaluate the health program first and then looking at a product that will have the more caloric density to get it on a weight gain program. And also, and you, your background dealing with thoroughbreds, you also got to look at the temperament of the horse. Yeah. If they're a nervous type horse or whatever, you know, they can be standing still, 
but my metabolism is moving so fast underneath. That's like since I have dealt with a lot of off the track race horses, well, I know it's God, they were hard keepers. And so finally, I asked, um, well, actually, I asked one of your people from Missouri. She came down, came to the farm. And somebody told about a feeding program and everything. And that's the story I told you on the phone. Yes. You know, here we got this 30 plus Arab with hardly no, goes back, no molars. Mm -hmm. We was feeding Otium. And that's, you know, because I really like the high fat content on it. And it was keeping his weight up good. And we didn't just give him a little bit when his weight good because we kept it up, yeah. you know. And I kept telling her, I said, you know, she said, but it's not all you know, complete feed. I said, ma'am, I know it's not complete feed, but I'm trying to tell you how good your product is. So just take it, you know. <laughs> but, you, you know, you got to look at that nervous system because, you know, like she pointed out, and I asked her about thoroughbreds, is like they, they come off of a high, so high protein diet off the track that their system, you know, they're so used to it that that's part of the reason why they are a hard keeper when you just feed regular hay, even feeding alfalfa. Yep. So with them type horses, if you get one, you want to take that in mind, but once again, you got to use, look at the whole picture of the horse and your feeding program. You know, if they do start losing weight, you know, put them on something. Don't wait till it's too late. Just put them on something at the beginning because that way it's easier for them to bounce back up. There's not a doubt about that. There's not a spring that doesn't come around that people all of a sudden say, my horse shed off and he's underweight. And unfortunately, it wasn't addressed in the middle of winter right. when those horses really needed to have an improvement in their plane of nutrition. Then then work out of behind the hay ball. But usually we're in this part of the world, we're at the grace of good green grass. So it's helping us a little bit. In some places, it's really tough once you get behind in the winter. Oh yeah, it's hard to bounce up. back up. So, here now we're just about done. We got old Eeyore here. <laughs> He's happy again because now he gets to socialize with people. <laughs> He's a trip. So, as I always say, be true to horse, they'll be true to you. First and foremost, I'm going to beat this into your all's head. You got to be true to yourself. That's the bottom line. You can't do anybody any good or yourself until you're true to yourself. And I'd like to thank Rusty once again for showing up here. I appreciate the info you gave us. And to my kids, my grandkids, and a special person out there, Wash Tay Lake. God bless. Take care.